just me or does everybody else like to knit and crochet all over the house? I had to make several different trips to several different rooms to get everything I wanted to show you. everybody, it's me, Margaret. I'm a Mississippi native transplanted to Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm sheepishly sharing a bunch of stuff I love with you. You know what I want to do today? I want to look back at 2016. Now, I know I'm a little late on this, but that's me, right? But it's still January, so I'm okay. But let's see what I said in 2016 and whether or not I actually achieved it. Then we'll talk about whether or not I'm going to keep those goals or make some new ones or both. So, let's go back in time and see what I had to say. So, for 2016 goal number one, I'm going to shrink the scraps and open skein stash. But did I do it last year like I hoped that I would? Well, yes, I did. And no. I used a lot of them, but not as many as I had hoped. Where the previous year, I wiped them out. I really did a great job on that. So the question is, do I want to keep it for next year? And yes, I do. I think of it as free yarn. I get a rush out of trying to figure out how I'm going to put these together to make them look like a wearable hat. Uh, usually that's all I end up making out of them is, is hats for donation purposes. But I have to like it or it doesn't get donated. So that's the big challenge. Now, if you are not a person who likes to use up your scraps, last week I talked about the fact that Sister Margaret Mary, uh, a teacher in Kentucky, has asked for them. So I'm putting the address to her school where you can just send this in the description box this week too. So you can get rid of your stash, scrap stash, if you want to. Of course, she takes full skeins too, so whatever. But moving on. I need to work on my stash. I have wonderful, wonderful things in my stash that I could use. So the big question is, did I do it? And yes, I did. I stuck with the caveat, though. And I bought only when there was a great sale plus a coupon or if it was for something specific. Now, I did get carried away and bought too much. I am, I am packed with acrylics and this is getting ridiculous. I don't need that much. I did not donate as much as I did last year so I have even more of a collection that I need to get serious about and turning it into usable products for somebody that could really use it. So that's the next thing. Am I going to keep that on my goal list for 2017? Absolutely. What about that caveat where I said if there was a great sale plus a coupon or whatever? I'm thinking I need to get rid of that caveat. I think I'm just going to really stick to buying no more, let's put it this way, no more acrylics for donations, okay? No more donation yarn. I have plenty of that that I can work with. The end. No compromise on that whatsoever. Yes. I'm going to make my first pair of socks this year. I've always said, I don't want to make socks because socks you have to stick in your shoes and who's going to see all that work that you did? I'm telling you, it's one of those things that is just like, you need to make some socks. You need to make some socks. So that's the goal for 2016. So did I improve my knitting with tiny needles, tiny yarns by knitting socks? Why, yes I did, thanks for asking. Now the results have been um, varying. I did really well on my first pair of top-down socks. Uh, you can look back in the more recent videos because that's when I've done it. But anyway, I'm getting there. I'm figuring out the different ways to knit socks and which one I think I may settle on. And of course, knowing me, there probably won't be a way that I'll settle on. I'll, I'll probably have to switch it up to keep from getting bored. But I like it. I like knitting socks. Now, last year, in reference to Intarsia at Fair Isle, this is what I said. Yes, it is something I love. It is something I want to do. It's something I'm going to have on my goal list for 2016. So, did she do it? No. No. I did not do it. I did not do... I think I did one color work project to speak of it. It wasn't learning any new skills. It wasn't, I didn't work on it. As a matter of fact, I've got a couple of donation projects to show you where I, I 
you know, have done a little color work. If you can call this color work, I mean, all it is is changing colors and doing another row. I don't consider that. I'm thinking intarsia and fair isle, and um, that's color work. So I can't claim this one. So do I want to keep it on there? Yes. I do want to keep that for my goal for 2017. Right now I'm kind of fixated on socks, so this is going to have to wait, but it's definitely on my list. Yes, I do. I want my knitting machine fixed, my flatbed knitting machine, so um, yeah, it's staying on the goal list. Ooh, fix the flatbed knitting machine. Did I do it? No. No, it didn't get done. Do I want to keep it on my 2017? Mm, I don't. I'm not going to put the pressure on myself for that. The reason why is because it's not like you can just run over to the store and take it to be fixed. You have to send it off, and I don't know if I need to send the whole shebang off or if I need to send just the carriage. And you know, I I just know it's not a priority right now. Do I want to get rid of it? No, I don't. So. If I get around to it, fine, but it's not going to be a high priority. I have plenty of things on my plate. I am going to enjoy the wonderful gifts from my friends. Yes, I will remain a charity dinner and crocheter, but I am also going to set aside some projects and time to work with those gifts on some things for me. So that's a goal for 2016. So did I enjoy gifts from my wonderful friends? Why, yes I did, thank you so much. Yes, and you know I'm so emotional when it comes to things like that, so sentimental, not emotional per se, sentimental about things like that. So it, yes, my wonderful gifts from my friends need to be turned into things that we love. So did I do it? Yes, will I do it again? Yes, I'm going to keep that goal on my list. You sheepishly shed 10 pounds by April 30th. Sheepishly shed 10 pounds by April 30th. Did she do it? No. However, yes, by the t when I got the prediabetes diagnosis, and I had to change all my eating. When you cut carbs, it's just the science behind the way fat works and all, not all calories are the same. And when I had to cut all those carbs and whatever, the weight just fell off. So yes, I am down 10 pounds and that's, that's good to know. Um, do I wanna keep this goal? I am at a comfortable weight, my ideal weight, is probably an additional five to ten pounds, um, but no, I'm not exactly going to, no, I don't need to keep this on the list. I'm okay either way. All right, so now we need to talk about some new goals that I need to put on the list. And one, because I am primarily a charity knitter and crocheter, we have moved this year to Atlanta. I need to find a local charity that really floats my boat. Uh, I had one at home, and it doesn't matter what I knit or crocheted, they wanted it, whether it, would, it was a toy, a hat, a scarf. Um, if I tried to do a baby sweater, which I didn't, but that's just an example of how I want to try to do a baby sweater, as long as I think it looks like something that someone may like, they would take it. That's the type of place that serves people who need everything, and I... I don't know. That's, that's just what I'm looking for in this area. Now, I do have a friend that I've met here whose uh, husband is in ministry, and he has a friend that's setting up something to rescue these girls that are in sex trafficking and helping them start a new life with everything they need from counseling to food to shelter to you know everything so um, I will certainly give to that either monetarily or you know if they need hats or scarves or something like that of course here now that look at me in my short sleeves today we we've had such a mild winter we went from snow that I showed you in my last video to up to 70 degrees and so it's kind of crazy so but it does get cold here and 
I don't know what they need. So it's still new. It's still being set up. So I, that, but in other words, it wouldn't be my main charity. I've got to find something that's going to be my main charity. That's an important goal. And then another important goal is not yarn related, but I have to rearrange and decorate the living areas in this house. Our other house was a house that we built and we had so many good, wonderful memories in that house. And I didn't want to leave that house. I was eager to move here for you know the reason why we did, but uh, that house was hard to replace. And I am not, comfortable in this house just yet, especially in the upstairs living area. It's not decorated because I cannot figure out how to set up that room. It's very strange, especially with the furniture we have. But even if I said to myself, hey, let's go buy all new furniture, I wouldn't know what to buy. It doesn't, it's just, I, I don't know how to make it work. So I got to figure that out because this is our home, right? We got to live in it, we have to like it. So, priority. So, that's enough talking about my goals. Let's see what I actually accomplished over the past week since I last spoke to you. Well, I'm missing one of my finished objects, but I think it's in the washing machine. But what it is, is one of these scrap buster knit hats. Now, I have a tutorial on how I do these things with scraps. Uh, it's more of a formula for a recipe of how to get it done uh, different size options and things like that with worsted weight but I'll put a link in the description box below oh I have a little joining problem there but anyway the other one that I did was smaller than this and I was using the leftover yarn that I had from the worsted weight socks that I made last week the little turned into puppets. These are easy, they're quick, they use your scraps, they do not have complicated decreases, it's just a little quick decrease and then you gather it at the top. I figured gathering's good enough for Addy Hats, why not for something like this? And um, so anyway, I've got a couple of these done this week. And what else did I do in my cute little bag that Erin made, Give Me Yarn 418? Southpaw Creations, how's that for an advertisement? Dun da da! Success with my toe up sock. Now, several things that I have learned in this process and from you guys in the comment section below is you know, formulas don't necessarily work for everybody. And this was certainly the case for me. It did not, the, the basic formula of doing your template and measure here and do that and all. It, it didn't work for me. As a matter of fact, I found that if I only knit one and a quarter inches and then started knitting straight down here, that fit me. Go figure. So it's only covering the, you know, the top part of my toes. It's not really, yeah, you know, whatever. It looks kind of funny, but it worked. And I also discovered that if I knit inside out, <laughs> my increases look great. <laughs> you do what you got to do. I'm really pleased with it. I'm really pleased. Now you may notice that there are not two at a time on here. I decided that I would just wait until I got the toe up thing going and was comfortable with that. And then I will add the new skill of having two at a time on the needles. Um, I found that I did not have good tension. It wasn't exactly ladders, but it was not good tension when I had two at a time on the needles. So we shall see, we shall see, the saga will continue. And one more thing about this is you may be saying, Margaret, why are you fretting so much about the toe up when your first pair of socks you did top down were pretty good with the exception of the new skills of heel and Kitchener stitch toe. Well, I don't know. I just got it in my head that this is the way I wanted to do it, and I feel like once I get my own formula, my own recipe, that I'll have better control over the sizing, no matter how the yarn is. At least this is what's going on in my head. I've been known to prove myself wrong, so we'll see. Now, another thing that I have to show you is a crochet project, and I did it with my homemade... Uh, carrot cakes. This is actually a Hobby Lobby yarn and this is a shawl. Let's see, I'm laying it out here and I'm going to bring you over to see it. This really isn't a pattern per se because the pattern that I found, I think it was called the tea shop shawl, it, 
it required you changing colors at specific points and I didn't want to do that because I wanted to use the Karen Cakes yarn. So what I did was took one portion of repeats that she had in that pattern and I just kept repeating it. So um, yeah, you, I mean you can see every now and then there's a, there's a lace type thing that goes like that and then it just increases. But I mean, it's okay. This will be donated. I am not much of a shawl wearer like this, but I've got probably, I think, one more of these sections to go. And then you put these tassel things on the end. But I really, really like the pattern and will tr probably try to make her version with the um, color changes in the appropriate places at another time. I actually found the knitted version first and had put it in my queue and then stumbled upon the crochet version and I, so I may, I don't know which one of those I'll do, but I, I may do it in the future. And if you're interested in making something like these with your scraps, you may want to know about the random stripe generator, which is a really cool thing right here on the internet, free. You just enter the colors you have and then a few parameters and poof, it gives you some, some suggestions on a patterned, striped patterning. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's Tuesday morning and I had every intention of beginning to film my video today, but instead I'm on my way to Thomas's school because Tuesday is Character Development Day. Now the guest speaker was a former student, specialist Robert Haley. He graduated in 2012. And here he is with Obama pinning the purple heart on him. Purple heart at the ripe old age of what, 23? Wow. It was a beautiful story from an impressive young man. And if that wasn't enough, you should have heard the advice that he gave to the boys. He was such a great leader. But on a lighter note, I've never ceased to be amazed at how they moved these 600 boys around with such precision. It took them no time to fill that auditorium. <laughs> and that's pretty impressive in itself. And in case you're wondering, the red name tags are the new guys. They just joined us the master. Costco the other day and I found this lamp. It is not an ot light but it is similar to an ot light. It's called an ultra bright and the lamp was $30 and it has these USB things like right in the back here where the cord comes out. It has two USB things so you can put it on your desk and charge your phone. It's you know, I just thought it was really neat. And it, sw it swivels like a million different angles. And we have it in use upstairs, as a matter of fact, because it's light and can be moved. Well, I'll show you this clip. Okay, here it is in action. And it's so light and portable that we've moved it over here to do this intense puzzle that we've got going on. But right here... You can adjust the intensity of light. Isn't that neat? My camera's super good auto light adjustment feature just messed up my demonstration of the light intensity, but it was really cool. But I thought it was a really good deal for $30. Now beside it was an Ot light, which you may be more familiar with. They sell those in Joanne. The deal about these lights is they're the LED white light, so it gives you a really clear light, so colors are true and whatever. So that would be excellent for nighttime knitting and crocheting of dark colors, if you've ever had trouble with that, if you don't have enough lighting in your favorite chair. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. So if you have a Costco near you, and you need something like that, go grab you one. Okay, here's the task light in action. And I can adjust it any way I want, keep it out of my eyes, but keep it on my work, keep it away from Smitty. Got my instructions over here, my cushion for my head. I'm set. got a couple things in today's treasure chest and the first comes from my niece and my daughter this is Sarah and Maggie and they are living in completely different cities right now but of course still keep up with one another and the two of them have stumbled across something really cool called happy mail 
Well, Maggie sent me a video telling me about it, and Sarah had sent Maggie a video, so then I asked permission to put Sarah's video, and pfft, here you go. Look and see what it is. So there's this subscription box called Happy Mail that this blog sends out every month. Um, they have Happy Mail, and then they have messy box. A messy box is like what Sarah does with Project Life and Happy Mail is a bunch of stationary goods and they had this deal going where it was five dollars and you got to test out a box that's usually twenty dollars and so I'm thinking about subscribing because this is so cool. Um, anyway so they this is the December box because the promotion was to get the December box but they have this whole list of stickers and some of mine are messed up. I don't know if the package got bent in the mail or what but a bunch of different stickers, this postcard that got messed up, but still really cool. And then they have all these different cards. So this one says congrats on the new house. This one is fingers crossed. And then you have this really pretty marbly one with this fancy envelope that says happy birthday. Get well soon. I feel like you can never have enough of this stuff stocked just for when different things like this come around. Happy birthday. And some of these aren't open cards. They're just right on the back of them, sort of like that. And then because it was December, they included these gift tags that say, just because, no peeking to and from. Sending you sunshine, another one of those. And I like how they coordinate the um, envelopes with the cards that look good. This one's my favorite. Ooh. Um, here's a hey you, and there's this little snow globe shaped stamp that I bet you would get a lot of use out of around Christmas time, which is cute. Um, this one says you can expect lots of pizza. May good fortune always find you. That one's funny. And then they sometimes include an art print, or in this case, it's like a little origami thing. So that's really cool. I'm not sure which month I got, but mine also came with some stickers and those little tags. But I think these are just plain pink tags. And then this card is really cute. It's all good. Um, Tree show silk, which kind of reminds me of you. Um, this is just some hand claps. And it says, you did it. This one is really cute to me. It says, good morning. And it's just like a net card. And I really like this cereal. I think I'm going to send it to Grace Ann because she loves cereal. And it says, easy like Saturday morning. Which, I think the song is Sunday morning. But, either way, that's cute. And this hotel... Better things ahead. I don't really know if that goes together, but it reminds me of California. Cute. This is just a um, postcard. It's a cool design. And Tinder Hearts Club. No idea when I'll ever use this one, but you never know. And today is your day. I'm guessing that's a birthday card, or I don't know. And then this big ice cream. I might just keep for myself. Things I'm craving. You, you, you. Ice cream, you. And I also got this tape, this sparkly tape. And I got a print. Here's the print. It's so cute. I had to put it on my wall. Um, right when I got it. Isn't that cool? So for people who love to mail happies and stuff and are not card makers, for example, I can make cards. I have all the, the tools and cool things to do it, but it's just not something that I get really excited about. It's also not for me because I can't remember anybody's birthday and anniversary. And yes, I write it down in my calendar. Yes, I check my calendar, but the problem is, is I just forget to go back and do it. I say, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. I need to do that. Ah, and then I get sidetracked by something else and I forget to do it. So uh, until I get better at that, I probably should not subscribe to something like this, right? But you may. I thought it was really neat. 
Sarah has also gotten into weaving recently, and she designed a loom, had her dad build it, and she's been going great guns. Isn't that cool? And last week for, for the treasure chest, I showed you some printable planner pages for free that you could do, that you could download and use for your own planning. And if you like those, you might like these too. Plus, knitters and crocheters might be interested in what she has to offer too. This one is from Eliza Ellis. All these are printable. If you look down the side, she's got all these different styles that may appeal to different aesthetics. So, wonderful things. But the best thing about this is that you get options for Australian and UK and American sizes because you know we all have different paper so there you go with, with that but also on here guess what I found she also provides free printable knit crochet and sewing organizers uh, we know them as journals now I reviewed a super one a while back I'll put a link in the description box uh, which is going to be really hard to beat but if you want to start just to see if you want to have a journal this is a great place to begin there's plenty of different pages that you can actually choose you know which ones you want you don't have to have the whole thing customize your craft journal the way you want it but I thought you might like to see that Last week I showed you that I stepped on my Cubics needle and I broke it. And XOXOXO told me I could have made a shawl pin out of it. Too late, I threw it away. And clever Victoria Murphy printed a calendar page from that scattered squirrel site that I showed you last week. She put it on magnet paper and stuck it on her fridge. That's pretty clever. And lots of people knew what the FX was in this Peyton's Croix sock yarn, but Dawn put it simply. It's just the color blending effect. That's all. Last week I asked for suggestions for rounded toe patterns and I had some super suggestions this week. I'm putting all the links to these in the description box below. Last week I mentioned how I prefer the sock ruler to the cardboard foot template for various reasons and Margaret of Margaret's Crafts reminded me of how she made a hybrid version with chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. I remembered this older video of hers and she even found the link for me so I could share it with you. Thanks Margaret! Now I gotta hand it to Jean Bean this week. She was really on it with a lot of helpful information. Now it all started with Katie Angel who pointed out the importance of choosing sock yarn because it lasts more than you know regular yarn. It is designed to wear. And Jean pointed out that you, you can buy little cards of reinforcement thread for your heels and toes. So in other words you could put it with whatever yarn you wanted to which I thought was kind of cool. And then the subject kept going and Jean explained about the different types of fibers that people will choose to put with their in their sock yarns and I'm asking questions from more and she's just full of this different information regarding fibers so if you want to learn a little bit more about it just go into the comments and search Jean Bean and poof there you go now lots of people encouraged me to just keep trying different things to get these socks to work and Maha's magic or is that Maja's magic told me to go up a needle size or two when I cast on because if my toes are too tight. Sarah in Germany told me to do the same thing. And that kind of makes good sense. That's really good thinking. So thanks, ladies. Added Josie Thornton suggested that I could be overthinking this thing. And she's pretty right because I tend to do that on a regular basis. However, I did try a basic sock instruction and it just didn't work for me. However, I also used her suggestion of casting on 32 stitches instead of the 24. I liked it so much better, Josie, so thank you for that. Plus, the longer cast on kept me from having my toe stitches too tight, interestingly enough. So thank you, Josie. All right, Kay Stevenson says, Hey, Margaret, I'm sorry to see you struggle with your sock knitting. I thought I would remind you that you live near knitters and have local yarn shops Sometimes a little help in person can go a long way. Now, why didn't I think of that? And then Sarah Hepworth, who I consider to be the queen of socks, pointed out that I am just showing and sharing the process that most, that most knitters go through to find their preferred method. And 
I don't think about that. I, it looks to me like everybody who knit socks just picked them up and knitted them perfect the, the first time. And many people, not just Sarah, pointed out that that took them a long time to figure out their own formula. So thank you to all the more experienced people who are kind enough to share with me that they had their own trials and tribulations to get these socks mastered. Remember last week when Mary found that terrific crochet blanket at Goodwill for $2.50? Well, Danny and I were having a conversation back and forth about how hurtful it can be to think that your hard work, uh, your gift that you gave to someone might just end up in Goodwill. But that got me to thinking about why I really like to knit and crochet in the first place. So I responded, my family doesn't care much for hand knits and crochet, but it's what I like to do, so I give it away, mostly to people I'll never see. I know my character hats make other people smile, even my family. <laughs> I know those hand puppets will make someone smile, if only for a moment, but the creation and learning process makes me happy for hours, days, weeks, months, years, because I keep creating. And this hobby brought me you and the other friends that interact with me because we have a shared interest. It's all in how we look at it, isn't it? So there's some food for thought. Does it bother you if people don't appreciate what you do for your hobby, something that you love? You know, I had to think about it this way. Um, do I appreciate or really get into things that everybody I love does? No, I don't. I'm not interested in a lot of their hobbies. But it doesn't mean I love them any less. What we have to do is find those who are knit-worthy, which is a wonderful term that was coined to describe those people who do appreciate and enjoy our, what we do, whether they can do it or not. And you've got people in your life that do appreciate it, and you probably have people that you don't. For example, in my own family of five, Maggie is knitworthy. The boys can be, depending upon what it is, and my husband is not. <laughs> he just doesn't wear anything like that. So just don't, you can't let it hurt your feelings. You have to understand that we, we're all different. So you might notice that's one reason why I take to doing charity work. <laughs> My donations are always welcome and I'm mostly needed. If you want to interact with any of these smart people, you can find them in the YouTube comment section, the Facebook group, the Ravelry group, or my blog, and all the links are in the description box below. mentioned Sister Margaret Mary uh, a little while ago talking about sending her the scraps. She uses those scraps not only for her crochet club but as a fundraiser. She sells what she and the kids have made for uh, money for the music program because you know how schools are with the last thing to get money are the arts programs. So this is one way that she keeps things up to, up to her standards, which is quite elevated. You should see her site. But anyway, back to Sister. She is vision impaired. Uh, we, we've talked about this in the past if you're an old subscriber, but new subscribers won't know her. She has developed a crochet technique for the visually impaired, how she holds the crochet hook and she can just feel it with her hands. But she posted recently on her Facebook page to help her win a Braille tablet. And I want to show you where. So if you could take a few moments to help her win this, it's just a matter of typing in your email address and her name, and poof, she's entered. So we could help her win it. That would be great. I'll put this link in the description box. And all you have to do is click on it. It'll take you here to this humanware site. And right down here, you put your own email address. And then you put Sister Margaret Mary Perez, USA, and her state is Kentucky. And then you can decide if you want to receive more emails about technologies for people who are blind. Note that the registrations end January 31st. But look how quickly they're going to choose a winner, February 1st. So if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Just click on the link that should be somewhere up here. It's my face. Just click me in the face and that'll subscribe you. Looking for a link? Anything that I talked about today, that'll be in the description box below. And you know what else is in there? Links to the social media groups where the flock hangs out. So come on, be a part of it. What are you waiting for? Talk to you soon. Bye.